A billion years ago, single-celled organisms ruled the Earth. But some of them had been experimenting with a multicellular lifestyle. One of these experiments, and only one, gave rise to animals. Now, researchers want to know how that shift might have happened, and they've been looking at some unicellular animal relatives to get some insight. So in this film, we'll meet five of our microscopic cousins who dabble in multicellularity. This is Salpingoica rosetta, and it's a coanoflagellate, a group of organisms considered the closest living relatives of animals. In the lab, S. rosetta usually hangs out in a single-celled state, but a bacterial signal can trigger a cell to start dividing, and those clones then circle up in a rosette pattern. Researchers are using tools like CRISPR to explore the genes that let multiple cells stick together, communicate and coordinate because genes like these would have been vital for the animal ancestors who first made the leap to multicellularity. Next on the list is Capsospora of Charshaki, a slightly more distant relative to the animals. When Capsospora enters its multicellular phase, it doesn't start with dividing into a collection of clones. Instead, clumps of separate cells swarm together and fuse into increasingly larger aggregates. Aggregation is a less obvious route to multicellularity than cloning, because the cells might be more inclined to competition than collaboration. But Capsospora shows it could have been a pathway taken by our own ancestors. Coanoica flexa is up next, and like S. rosetta, it's another coanoflagellate. C. flexa cells can come together in a little cupped monolayer sheet, with all their flagella pointing in the same direction and the little cup can invert, flipping inside out in response to things like light or darkness. C. flexa can also go multicellular using either clonal division or aggregation of cells, or even a combination of both. These behaviours are thought to help this species survive in the rapidly changing environment of the tide pools where they've been found. In at number four is a species a bit further back along the evolutionary tree that led to animals. Spheriforma arctica. It has spherical cells which undergo something called cenocytic division. In this process, the nucleus divides repeatedly within a single cell until the cell comes apart. This process loosely resembles embryonic development in insects, which could hint that some of the roots of animal development predate the evolution of animals themselves. A close relative of S. arctica is the final organism on our list, and it's called Chromosphera perkinsii. C. perkinsii divides clonally, looking remarkably like a developing vertebrate embryo, and eventually forming large colonies that seem to have two different cell types that position themselves in distinct ways. Cell specialization and organization are key to the evolution of multicellular organisms, and C. perkinsii might suggest that these abilities are much older than we thought. For all five of these species, researchers are trying to puzzle out whether their unusual adaptations might have given rise to their animal cousins' multicellularity, or whether they evolved independently. But what they do show is the wide variety of ways in which multicellular animals could have come about. DNA pulled from the oceans hints that there could be even more as-yet-unknown microorganisms, closely related to animals, perhaps with even more unusual strategies for working together and experimenting with multicellularity. <laughs> <laughs>